Welcome, welcome, fellas, to the Captain Saver Bro Show, episode 41, Building Your Value as a Man. We're going to do something different. Today, you know, I want to talk about building your value, but I'm going to give you guys a free gift, right? I'm going to, I have a program um, that I did about, uh, I don't know how long ago at this point, um, not too long ago, but it's called Building Your Value as a Man, um, and it goes into building your value and also displaying your value. I think today's episode, I'm going to give you guys that for free. So, um, you know, you'll be able to get that program for free. You can listen to it, watch it or whatever. Um, And we're going to get into that in a second. But first, you know, this episode is brought to you by Seduction Mastery. Now, by the time you hear this, Seduction Mastery, the enrollment will be closing tonight. May 19th at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not enrolled... You will miss out. I'm taking this shit off the market. It's way too dope. It's way too deep to be on the market. Now, when you get the Seduction Mastery program, you're going to get seven programs in all, including my new course, Seduction Mastery. Seduction Mastery itself, the new course that goes into, you know, in depth about seduction. And I'll touch on that in a second. But that alone is seven hours. Seven hours packed full of game teaching you the seduction game and breaking down a seduction game on a deep, deep, deep level. Seven hours. Yeah, it's that real. Now, seduction mastery goes into seduction deep based on, you know, men's personality types or men's character types. And then I go deep into different seduction strategies, several different seduction strategies, some of them which are very dark, very, you know, dark psychology type stuff. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, and I also break down female archetypes. So there's different uh, types of females. The most common ones I have about 15, I believe 15, 17 or something like that, at least 15, uh, types of different women and how to seduce those women, you know, the, the good that come with them, the bad that come with them, and then how to seduce them based on the strategies and the personality types, the, the the men's personality types. So it's huge. It it will put a lot of things into perspective. And there's nothing like this program on the market. I can guarantee you that. Now, you also will get my, my most popular program f- for free. I'm gonna throw that in there. How to make a woman fall in love and obsess over you. That teaches the love game. It teaches you how to create love and create the love environment for your woman to thrive in. You also get how to vet women properly, where I teach you how to vet women, how to position yourself in a way that women can be, women will open themselves up and become extremely comfortable to you so you can vet them and make informed decisions. You see what I'm saying? And I break down different types of uh, women, you know, how to spot promiscuous women, how to spot women with mental issues, this type of chick, that type of chick. I break that down. How to vet women is, is, is probably the most... It's probably the most important course on this list, but you know, guys like the juicy shit. So how to make a woman fall in love has been my most popular thus far. Now you also going to get how to take a woman's soul. This is a webinar that we did that goes in depth into how to get inside a woman's mind, how to get inside of a woman's head, how to get inside of a woman's emotions. You also going to get how to have threesomes. And then you also going to get sexual seduction and bedroom mastery. Then you're going to get making the modern woman submissive. Modern women come with a shell. A lot of modern women today, I don't want to say most, but a lot, you know, a lot of the times when you meet women, they have this guard up. I'm going to teach you how to remove this guard with making the modern woman submissive, of course. And that's not it. That's not it. On top of that, you get eight weekly support meetings with me, you know, your guide, your game guide. So if you have any questions about any material or whatever, we meet on we're going to meet on Mondays for eight weeks straight and, you know, go over any questions that you may have. Go over any, you know, any game pointers that you need, whatever you need. I got you. We're going to meet once a week now uh, for eight weeks. Now, you also going to get um, eight weeks to the Players Club, my private men's community, the Players Club. And in this meeting, we you know, it's just a group of guys like minded guys like yourself 
like myself, we're gonna chop up. We chop up game. You know, bounce ideas off each other. You can ask group and uh, ask questions in the forum, and then there we meet biweekly. So we meet twice a month there. So when you get this package, you in twelve and two weeks, you will be able to meet with me twelve times. That's worth the price alone. You get all of that stuff that I just named. Remember everything that I just named. You get all of that for six ninety seven. Go click the link. Click the link in the bio. Click the link in the chat. Click the link in the script in the description. This program ends May nineteenth at eleven fifty nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You only have a few hours left. You only have a few hours left. Take advantage. Take your game to the next level. I, I'm doing this so you guys can step your game up and stop struggling with, with, with women, man. Retire me, goddammit, so I can go on and do something else, so I can go teach about finances or something like, like that, you know, um, which I'll probably do at some point, you know, teach y'all how to get a bag. But, uh, you know, right now, teaching you guys how to deal with women because it's a necessary life skill. You understand what I'm saying? Because picking the right woman and cultivating your relationship is the single most important thing when it comes to your success as a man, if you pick the wrong woman, you're going to be doomed. If you pick the right woman, you're going to be headed for greatness. You understand? And if you pick no woman, you'll be at least you can still be headed for greatness. But nobody wants to be alone or lonely. We all desire companionship on some level. Right. So I teach you how to do that in a very, very thorough way, you know, from each angle. So seductionmastery.com. Click the link in the um the bio, click the link in the description, click the link in the chat, wherever you see this at, click that link. Sign up. You only have a few hours left. After that, enrollment closes for good, and you're going to miss out. But anyway, let's get into this game. This is my um, uh, a free guide, a free course on how to build your value as a man. This is my gift to you for free. Welcome, fellas. I am your gracious game advisor. Yours truly, King Dre, and I present to you the Value Masterclass. Sit back, go to a quiet place, get your pens and pads, and take notes. It is very important that you take notes on this. Now, value and understanding your value, right? Understanding the value you possess is one of the key components to your foundation of success as a man and success in any re arena, whether it be at your job, you know, in your business, relationships, friendships, whatever, um, it's the foundation of that success. This community that we're a part of, um, whether you want to call it this red pill community or the manosphere, you know, this manosphere or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really speak on value and becoming valuable outside of the trendy high value man slogan, right? And even then that term is pretty much thrown around as a weightless buzzword. Don't really have any meaning to it and you can't really quantify it. So what I'm here to do is teach you to recognize your value, maximize it and become the most valuable man that you can be. Like I say, whether it be in your relationships, your, your, um, where you work, you know, at your job, your career, your business, whatever. You want to be as valuable as you can to everybody. This is how you get the respect and the praise by being valuable. You know, this is what make people honor and respect you and look up to you. Value, providing value. Again, get your pens and pads out and take notes. Let's get it. Understanding your value. So right now, what we're going to do is break down the importance of understanding your value and all of the benefits that come with understanding your value. Now, first things first, others notice your awareness of your value, thus opening up opportunity to you, right? So when people see that you value yourself, they will extend you business opportunities, collaborations, promotions, jobs, or whatever. So let's say like, you know, you on your job and, you know, you, you a good worker, you provide value, you know, to your, to, to the company. And they see that you provide that value and you value yourself by the way, uh, based on the way that you carry yourself, people are more inclined to give you promotions and, um, you know, raises and things like that. 
Or, you know, if you have a business and, you know, you value your business and your business also provides value, people are willing to collaborate with you, um, you know, give you more business opportunities. So, um, again, others will notice your awareness of your value and it'll open up a lot of opportunity to you. Now, second, it makes code approaching much easier, right? So when you understand your value, you approach a woman with confidence because you know exactly what you bring to the table. You, you're not going to be scared to walk up to her because you know that, you know, you money in the bank, right? Because you know your value and you know the type of value you can bring to her, right? And you will internalize that she should feel honored, right? You will start to feel like she should feel honored that you even approached her because of the value that you bring and how you can upgrade your life. I know with me, when I approach women, I feel like they should feel lucky or they should feel honored that I'm even approaching them because I probably more than likely can do more for her than she can do me. So this helps me approach easily with confidence. Think about it like this, right? Let's say if you had a winning a lottery ticket and you had to give it to a girl, somebody said, hey, give this winning lottery ticket is a million dollars and give this to this girl, right? Would you be nervous or scared to give it to her? No, right? And you wouldn't be scared because you know what's in this bag. You know that this 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 ticket is going to change her life, right? So if she rejects you, I mean if she rejects the the lottery ticket, if she rejects the lottery ticket, you more than likely going to look at her like she's crazy and that she lost her mind because this ticket can change her life. This is the same way how you view yourself when you have value. If a girl rejects you, you know like she has to be crazy. Something has to be wrong with her because you you have the ticket to upgrade her life, to change her life, to make her feel good, to make her life better, to give her new experiences, to to take care of her if you want to do that. You know, you can you can provide her so much value. And when she don't take the offer, then something got to be wrong with her. So understanding your value, right? It makes cold approaching much much easier. The number 3 you get more value from your friends, associates, and women, right? Your friends and associates will be valuable to you because you are valuable to them. And when you know your value, you'll command it from other people. So when you know, when you know your value, the value that you bring to your friendships, when people who don't, you know, when people who don't bring you value, you'll pretty much cut that dead weight off, right? You, 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 you won't, want to be around them when they're not when they're not providing you value because you know your value and you know the value that you bring to them but you know a lot of people who have friends who just extract from them who just extract from them and they don't provide their friend don't provide them any value to the friendship or the relationship they tend to get used and abused and misused and this is because you know they don't understand your value when you understand your value your friends in your family or your associates or whatever, they'll bring value to you as well. And this will make the relationship a lot more balanced, right? None of my friends, right? None of my friends or associates are their weight. My value, the value that I believe that I have, my value won't allow me to be around anyone who doesn't provide me value in return. Does that make sense? Number four, you get more value from your employees or subordinates so you know if you have employees or if you have a company or you're in a position to provide other people value based on them working for you they will work extremely hard and more efficient because they know your value will benefit them if they do so so if, if think about like how companies you ever had a job and some of those jobs are loose and lax and they, they, they don't really value themselves and, you know, you can go late and you can steal time and do all of that shit and they don't really pay much. You don't care about it. They don't care about you. It's just like they're in, in existence. These companies don't value themselves. But if you've ever worked at a place that value themselves and they provide a lot of value, their employee, their employees are a lot more efficient and their employees work a lot harder because they know the harder they work, the more efficient they work or the more efficient they become at their job, the more value they'll get from their employer. You understand what I'm saying? So 
if if you're in a position in a position of power to where you know you have employees or, or some and subordinates excuse me understanding your value will get you a long way because they'll work harder for in exchange for your value number five you get more money from your customers your customers will pay you based on the value you project i'm gonna say that again your customers will pay you based on the value you project not the value they think you have right so let me give you a prime example for you guys that know i had i have a course attraction 101 right now right now that course is at 397 dollars. so it was recently 250 dollars, but right now it's at uh 397 dollars. well when i first created this course right a couple years ago this thing was on the market i released this course for the price of 15 dollars 15 funky ass dollars right but that's because i didn't truly value right i didn't value my work right so other people didn't value and guess what a lot of people didn't even buy it at $15 and you know more so with the mentality like well if this $15 it can't be you know it can't be too hot if he only charges $15 i made way more money priced at 250 and 397 than when i had it at $15 right and it took for people sitting me down like hey bro you you need to realize your value you need to understand your value you're never going to get paid like you truly want to get paid until you start projecting your value people are going to always uh you know people are going to always shortchange you and underhand it even if they believe you're valuable but if you don't know your value if you don't project that value you will never get what you deserve Right. Again, my attraction course, when it first came out, was fifteen dollars and more than a few people pulled me to the side. Uh, flew my clients pulled me to the side like, hey, dude, you are out of your goddamn mind for charging this cheap. This shit is worth way, way, way more. Um, and like I said, I wasn't making a lot of money with it at fifteen dollars and a lot of people wasn't really buying it. More people bought it at two fifty and three ninety seven than when it was at $15. You understand what I'm saying? So when you understand your valuable, I mean, when you understand your value, excuse me, you will get way more money from your customers and your clients. Trust me. Number six, you will get paid more and served more. Understand that when you know your value, let's say you have a job, right? Or, or you in um, a part, you know, you, you have a career right and you have a skill and you know you know you have a skill that that pays and you know you know your skill bring value to the marketplace when you understand this you will demand to be paid what you what you are worth and even if you know it's not a career let's say you you know you have a, a business in hvac or plumbing you're not going to let yourself be undercut. You're not going to let your people, you know, you're not going to let people undervalue and underpay you because you know the value you bring to the marketplace. So you will demand to be paid what you, what you are worth. And when you demand to be paid what you're worth, most people will give you what you, you know, what you're worth based on the, uh, the value you provide. Also, right, when it comes to dating, you will require women to serve you to earn what you have to offer guys who let women use and abuse them guys who let women just sit around them and soak up all of their resources and you know just take advantage of them these guys don't understand their value right and a lot of the times when situations end with women these guys often feel like you know they came up empty handed. You ever been in a relationship in the ends and you felt like you got nothing out of it or you came up empty handed or with the short end of the stick end of the stick? That's because you don't you didn't realize your value and you didn't let you didn't make the woman earn your value. You know, you didn't make her earn the, the value that you provided. So when it ended, she didn't really do anything for you and you just gave, 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 gave. And if you don't want to feel like that, Right. If you don't want to feel like that, you have to understand your value. And once you understand it and, and you internalize it, you will require you will start to require women be, you know, serve you or make them earn 
what you have to offer. Number seven, you are less likely to be disrespected by others. Other people will value you and respect you because you value and respect yourself. You have to act like a king to be treated like one. That comes from the 48 laws of power. If you want people to value you, you have to value yourself. If you don't value you, if you don't value yourself, if you don't respect yourself, nobody else is going to. So you set the tone for how people treat you. You ha- you set the tone for how people, um, you know, how people serve you and how people do by you and how people, you know, respect you. You set that tone. So you have to value yourself if you don't want other people disrespecting you. You understand what I'm saying? Think about it like this, right? You ever been to somebody's house and it was clean, pristine, even if you was the filthiest pig alive. But when you go to this person's house or when you get into this person's car, you see that they value their their shit. You see that they value their property, their car, their house or whatever. So you tend to to value it. You don't leave trash. You don't leave your trash or, you know, mess up their stuff or, you know, rearrange their furniture or leave your your dishes out. You know, if you go into their kitchen and it's already clean, you'll see that. You, you know, subconsciously see that, okay, this person keeps his shit clean. I'm not going to just throw my dishes in here already, right? This is because you understand, we understand that uh the when people value themselves, we tend to value them. Now, let's say you go into somebody with a dirty house you go to a, a somebody's house who's whose shit is is filthy is dirty or you get into somebody's car that's dirty it's trash all over the uh, place you go in the bathroom it's piss all on the toilet so shit you take a piss on the toilet are you gonna wipe it are you gonna clean the toilet and uh you take a, you go take a piss it's piss all in the toilet piss all on the floor are you you know if you get a little bit on the seat are you going to be careful not to get it on the seat or the floor? No, because if they don't care about your their shit, why should you care? That's just human psychology. It's just the way humans think. If you go in their kitchen and it's a sink full of dirty dishes, you know, or uh, when you get done eating, are you going to clean out your thing? Most likely, no. You're just going to throw it in there with the other um with the other dishes you get into a, a a person's car and it's dirty, it's trash all over the floor. If you have trash, where you going to well, you're going to put your trash more than likely. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same with neighborhoods. You go to a poor neighborhood. Most people just dump their trash everywhere because people don't respect their own neighborhood. Right. But if you can be you can come from the ghetto and the projects. But if you go to a, a, a more affluent neighborhood, whereas, you know, you see people don't litter. What you're going to do? You're not going to litter. You understand? So, you know you less likely to be disrespected. Your house is less likely to be disrespected. Your, your car, your property, your value, your valuables are less likely to be disrespected when you value yourself, when you value your house, when you value your car, when you value your belongings, other people will do. I mean, other people will too, and they won't disrespect it or you, you understand what I'm saying? Number eight, you won't tolerate bad behavior and disrespect from women. Check it out, right? When you understand your value and you understand how valuable you are to other women, you wouldn't dare let a woman violate you. You wouldn't dare let her cross your boundaries. You wouldn't dare let her disrespect you, right? And by you having the confidence and the backbone to enforce that, they will be 100 times more attracted to you. Women are v- v- highly, wildly attracted to a man who has boundaries and understands his value and don't let nobody cross him or misuse him or step outside of that. Women are, this will, this keeps women in check. This is very important. You won't tolerate that bad behavior and that disrespect from women when you truly, truly understand your value. Number nine. You get what you are worth and much, much more, right? You will get what you are worth because you will negotiate based on the value you have. So in this world, in this life, you are going to get what you are worth because that's what you'll negotiate. Now, understand there's a quote somewhere. I don't know who this quote is from, but it's brilliant, right? And it's true. This is you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. And when you understand your value, you'll you'll negotiate based on the value that you believe that you have or the or the value that the marketplace 
or the value that women or friends or society has, you know, convinced you that you have. You understand what I'm saying? So again, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. And when you understand what then the value you bring to people and bring to the marketplace and to the world and you understand your value as a man, you are going to get what you are worth and you are going to get much more in this life. What women find valuable in men and how to leverage that value. These are the most common traits and attributes that women find valuable. They are hardwired to value these things. As I go through this list, if you spot some qualities that you need to work on, note them and then begin to develop these qualities that that way you can leverage them to be successful. Um, you know, whether it's women or in life or relationships or just in general. So whatever you see that you lack, make sure you, you know, you take notes and then you develop these qualities so that you can leverage it. So for uh, for instance, confidence, right? Um, I'm going to talk about confidence first. So let's say you need to develop your confidence. You know, okay, you know that confidence, you, you take the steps to develop your confidence. That way, when you get around women, you display your comfort, uh, your, your confidence. And that, you know, that way you're leveraging your confidence to be more attractive or to get what you want or to, you know, displaying your value in that way. Confidence. Confidence is the most important quality you can have. If you don't have confidence, you don't have anything. Fellas, you need to have confidence in life, in dating, relationships. If you don't have it, you're going to be, they are going to eat you alive, chew you up and spit you out. And not just women, business partners, employees, employers will take advantage of you. Employees will take advantage of you. Customers will take advantage of you. You need confidence. Why do women find confidence valuable in a man? First and foremost, they generally don't have it in themselves and they need you so they can tap into your confidence and it rubs off of them, right? So they'll tap into your confidence and in turn, that'll transfer to them and make them a little bit more confidence. Your energy will give them, your confidence and energy will give them the boost that they need to become confident. Also, they need you to be confident enough to lead make decisions, find solutions to problems, bring closure to conflict, make money. Your confidence represents their security. You understand what I'm saying? Also, your confidence um, balance their lack of confidence. So them not being confident, they have you that's confident and they can depend on you to make things happen, you know, to make, you know, lead them to prosperity based on how confident you are in making your decisions and getting shit done and things like that. So your, your, their lack of confidence and your confidence, it balances, it balances each other out and they can depend on you for yours. Also, it represents strength and the ability to uh, depend on your arm, your own arms, not them, you know, um, taking care of you. Right. So when, when you confident in, in your own abilities, to them, it's like they don't have to take care of you. You'll be all right. And that makes it, it that makes you easier to deal with, if you understand what I'm saying. You being confident in your abilities and you know, making things happen and getting things done. They don't have to hold your hand. They don't have to look at you like a, a, a an extra child. And so, you know, with this, you become more valuable because it makes it makes it a lot easier to deal with. It makes you a lot easier to deal with, you know. A lot of guys, a lot of guys have mommy issues and, and they look to, to women to be their mothers and women don't want to play that, you know, mother role to a man. You know, they want to be women and they want to be led and they want to be with a confident, strong man. And when you can be that, it makes their time easier and they can focus on doing other things like being feminine and serving you and being, you know, relaxing in their femininity. Ambition. Ambition is basically a strong desire to achieve great things or achieve success. Fellas, you have to be ambitious. You have to want more out of your life. You have to. This is one of the most attractive qualities that, you know, you can have as a man, you know, and it's one of the things that women find most valuable in a man. Let me break that down to you. So, you know, why do women find ambition in a man valuable? First and foremost, your ambition represents 
financial security for them. They are hardwired to seek out providers. Hardwired. It's just the way that they are. Also, your ambition represents financial security for offspring or future offspring. So if you have, you know, just the, the thought of kids or if she has kids, women are biologically hardwired to want to make sure that their kids are well taken care of. You understand what I'm saying? So your your ambition represents the idea that she'll her and the offspring will be OK and they won't lack resources. Right. And another thing is that you know another reason why they value ambition is because they benefit from your greatness right your success and lifestyle would translate to her as a life of comfort so your success you know your you know riches or success or whatever she gets to benefit from that and she can live a good comfortable lifestyle as well so when she see you ambitious she see an ambitious man who's going somewhere and that has goals and want to get rich and you know want to get to the bag that signals to her like okay i need to stay down with this because you know my life gonna be easy i'm gonna live a comfortable life my bills gonna be paid you know i'm gonna you know take the trips and the, you know get all the nice shit and be able to get my nails done i'm not gonna have to worry about shit just a good comfortable life right and that not necessarily to say that you're gonna provide that but this is what signals this is what's going through you know her mind and her subconscious mind when she sees a man that she likes who's ambitious uh who's ambitious so you're always understand that your ambition is very women see that as high you know value you know you're very valuable to a woman when you're ambitious next and this is obvious right um but they value your resources what's that that's your money your assets your living space you know apartments uh houses and you know transportation your resources represent security and an easy comfortable life it's just a survival women are naturally hardwired to seek out the man who can provide resources it's survival you understand so they're going to always always value a man and his resources a man with resources next we have protection right women value a man who's a protector who can make them feel safe right so your ability to protect her and not just physically, you know, or protecting her life for survival, but this goes for the ills of society as well, right? Can you protect her against, let's say somebody trying to scam them into buying something and, you know, you use your intelligence and your wits to stop her from getting scammed out of her money or stop her from getting taken advantage of shit like that. You know, that's a part of protection as well. It's not just physical protection, but protecting them from the elements is, you know, the elements and the ills of society. So women value a protector. Now, why do they uh, value protectors your ability to protect them is important for their survival and the survival of offspring right women aren't born with the tools to survive in nature so they need you for it they aren't born with the physical strength they don't naturally have that strength that brute force that 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 physical hand strength strength in general the, the the propensity to carry out violence, the testosterone, the, the ambition. They don't, they're not naturally born with this. So they need you for it. This is why they value protectors, right? And even though we have evolved into a more civilized society where, you know, women are not in nature, uh, out in nature, the biological need for a protector is still there. So they still need you um, hardwired to need you as a protector, even though they have the police department, they have grocery stores to eat, they have uh, the fire department, they have all of this stuff in place, the military in place to protect them, they still crave and need a masculine protector in her life. So even though we evolved into civilized society and women aren't out in nature alone, the biological need, the biological hardwiring and the need for a protector is still there. Remember, nature doesn't change, even if society does. Next is stability. Women value a stable man. And I mean stable in your life as far as finances, transportation, and living arrangements. So do you have the basic necessities and, you know, are your bills paid? Are you not knee deep in debt? Uh, debt? Just 
being stable as a man. You don't have to be the super richest, uh, you know, millionaire, but just stable that you're living uh, at least a decent, comfortable life. Right. Women really value that. And not only do they value um, physical stability as far as, you know, again, finances, transportation and living arrangements, they value emotional stability as well. Here's why. You see, most of them are emotionally unstable and they thrive in their emotions. Women are emotional beings. They make decisions based on how they're feeling and how, um, you know, based on their emotionals. And they need your emotional stability to balance them out and bring them perspective. It's almost like a yin and a yang. Now, your stability with your assets, right? Your, your stability with your assets and resources represent a comfortable life. And also, you know, it represents the fact that they won't have to take care of you. So this is your state, your stability, you know, as far as your finances and transportation and living arrangement, it's, it's easier. You are an easier person to deal with. They won't have, you know, to take care of you. So emotional stability, women, um, you know, that's very important to a woman. The next thing that they value is masculinity. I don't care what they say nowadays. I don't care what they say in the media, on social media. Women value masculinity. And here's why they value masculinity, right? Your masculinity is the yin to her yang. It balances her out. This is nature. Remember what I said earlier, guys. We evolve, society evolves, but nature doesn't really evolve. And it's a part of her, her nature to seek and, you know, be turned on and aroused by masculinity. She needs masculine uh, masculinity. She needs masculine energy from a masculine man. And this is something that you cannot rep, uh, replicate. You cannot replicate masculine energy. So this is why you have to understand you know, that your masculinity as a man is very powerful and it's very, you know, it's very rare, especially in today's times where a lot of guys are just pussyfied. You cannot replicate masculinity. You can't put it in a bottle and sell it. You can't put it in a drug and make you become more mad. You can't take a pill to become more masculine. A woman can't, you know, she, she, that's not authentic masculinity. If a, a woman wanted to be a dyke, it's not authentic masculinity. You cannot replicate authentic masculinity. Now, also your masculinity brings out her femininity and she can relax in her softness. Women are happiest when they're in their feminine, when they're relaxed in their softness and they're nurturing, um, you know, and they're relaxed in their feminine energy. They are the most happy. And another thing, it turns her on sexually. This is nature. They are hardwired to be turned on sexually by a masculine man. Another thing that they value is emotional fortitude. Your emotional fortitude is your emotional strength, right? They want and expect you to be the logical rock who they can depend on emotionally. This is balance. They also want you to make sound logical decisions so you guys can progress. Also, don't a woman want a man who gets mad and gets overly emotional and beat her up or call her, you know, uh, call her and her out her name and uh, verbally abusive and shit like that. Dudes who do that, they don't have emotional fortitude. And that represents danger for a woman when a man can't control his emotions. He, and he lets his actions or uh, he lets his emotions dictate his actions. So women value emotional fortitude. And in the beginning, this is what they're looking for. Um, they, a lot of the times they test you to see how much, you know, if you have emotional fortitude and if you don't and you, and, and they see that you can let your emotions, uh, dictate your actions and your emotions take over you with anger, jealousy, uh, impulse spending, uh, insecurity and things like that. If they can see this type of stuff in you, it'll turn them off. So emotional fortitude, emotional strength, women value this. Now, next we have intelligence the ability to apply knowledge and skills, right? So why do women value intelligence? Well, women value intelligent men because intelligent men can make things happen in life, which benefit her greatly. Intelligent men know how to put the pieces together and get shit done 
and, and, and make good decisions and act on those decisions so he can prosper and lead her to prosperity and greatness and success. This is why women value intelligent men. And also women value and look up to men who can teach them and who can stimulate them intellectually. You understand what I'm saying? Women love a man who can teach her things, upgrade her mind and stimulate her intellectually. Women value that. Up next, we have attention and validation, the good old attention and validation. You know, it's commonly talked about in the manosphere, right? Your attention is oxygen to a woman. Everything they do is for your attention. Everything you guys have to remember, they are hardwired to seek a man's attention and validation and mate and be successful. This is key. This is nature. They are hardwired this way. Your attention validates her entire existence. This is why intention is and validation is, is very important. And the guys who can leverage their attention and leverage their validation are the most successful with women, guys who give their attention away freely and give their va a validation away freely. Usually women take advantage and run all over these guys. Guys, attention and validation is extremely important and women value this. It validates their entire existence, but don't make your attention and validation so free and so cheap. You understand what I'm saying? Now, next on the list, we have dominant sex women value a man who can dominate her sexually why is that this satisfies that primal desire and lust side of her so her 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 lustful nature her primal you know lustful nature this satisfies this to be dominated by a strong masculine men especially nowadays most guys are pussy most guys don't know how to put it down so if you can dominate her sexually she values that, right? Like I said, they want a man who's strong, masculine, and dominant, especially in the bedroom. So, and most men, they can't hold up. So be strong, be dominate. I mean, be dominant and dominate her ass in that bedroom when you're knocking it down. You understand what I'm saying? Make her submit to you. Make her do submissive things for you in the bedroom outside of the bedroom too but that's another story for another day but when you get in that bedroom you have to make sure that she's submissive and all the way 100 percent submissive because this is what she wants to be but she can't just be like this for anybody she can't just open up for any old man it's the dominant masculine man who makes her feel feminine and relaxed in her feminine uh and her feminine energy and her submissive energy you understand domination you got to understand that it's valuable now the last thing on the value list that you know women find valuable is companionship the state of spending time with someone or having someone to spend time with we as human beings are hardwired to desire companionship nobody wants to be lonely right more so women right women are really really lonely because most women don't have a purpose as uh for their lives most women's purpose revive around men and companionships and relationships with people that's you know most women that's their purpose to 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 be in relationships and friendships and shit like that whereas we teach you guys your purpose should be building the world and making the world a better place and you know getting your money and shit like that so you don't depend on people and more um more specifically women to fill the void which makes you needy right so women are uh, need companionship more um, and not that men don't need companionship, but women more so because they don't have purpose in their lives. That's why a man can come in a woman's life and a woman will literally dedicate her whole life to see to it that a man is successful and prosperous and that he progressed throughout the world and do great things. Women will dedicate their lives and give their lives to do so um, because, like I said, they don't have purpose in their life. They value companionship companionship is very important to them it keeps them from being lonely and nobody wants to be lonely 
All right, fellas, so that's the list of the most common things and the most important things that women find valuable, what they find the most valuable. There's a ton of other things that I can put on this list, but I'll be here all day. Um, But that's just, like I say, some of the most important things and the things that they find the most valuable. Now, do you need everything on this list to be valuable? Of course not. You don't need every single trait or quality on this list. You need to have confidence, though. That's a need. That's a must. But no, you don't. But the more of these on this list that you do have, the more valuable and desired you will be. So the more traits and qualities on this list that you have as a man, the more attractive you will be to women. I mean, women, the more um, valuable you'll be to them and the more you'll be desired. Also, too, before I close this part out, Like I said earlier, use the things on this list, right? You use the things on this list for leverage. If you don't have any of these qualities or traits, then develop these qualities or traits so you can leverage them for success, relationships, and life in general. So if you only have two things, use, you you know, see what else you can develop and develop that so you can add to your personality and you can add to the things that make you valuable and desired as a man and you can leverage these you can leverage this this stuff you can leverage your confidence you know you can leverage your ambition you can leverage your state stability you can leverage your masculinity the more you have the better the more you have the more leverage you have so it's about building yourself up so you can have leverage in relationships and dating and life um, to ultimately get what you want to succeed and to win in this game. Now, fellas, in this section, we're going to talk about how to find and increase your value. Fellas, make sure you're taking notes on this. This is a very, this is very, very important. Probably one of the most important sections of this whole Um, this whole class or whatever, finding and increasing your value because you can know um, what women find valuable. You know, you can understand what value is. You know, you can uh, understand what turn women on and all that shit. But if you have no value yourself, if you can't find your value, if you don't know how to increase your value, um, then it's pointless knowing all of that shit. So pay attention to this section. Now, first things first, You have to get on your purpose, right? And a lot of guys think, oh, I need to find my purpose. How do I find my purpose? Well, I'm here to tell you, newsflash, you don't find your purpose. You create your purpose. That's right. You create the purpose. You, you know, you have to make the conscious decision to dedicate your life to a cause or to a mission. That's creating your purpose. Your purpose ain't going to just come and jump in your lap and, you know, come and knock on your door and say, hey, this is your purpose. No, you have to make the decision in your mind to, you know, uh, dedicate your life to a cause. And it's best if you do that through your talents and your passions. You make the decision to make the world a better place, to make your community a better place, to advance society um, through your through through your talents and your passions, right? And it don't have to be, you don't have to, you know, land on the moon, but just whatever you good at, whatever you passionate about, use that to, you know, to serve people and to serve the world. I'll give you an example. Like me, right? As a dating coach, a lifestyle coach, a men's improvement specialist, uh, you know, a game advisor or whatever. One day I made the conscious decision that I wanted to see change. I got tired of men getting run over by women. I got tired of men getting taken advantage of women and I got tired of men being weak. I don't like to see men in a weak state because I believe that weak, broken men make a weak, broken society. So I made the decision to change that. And right now I live my life based on that. I live my life to wake up and help guys change simp, give simps the game, help men help men and so we could bring balance to the world because feminism has taken a toll on the world and now everything is unbalanced and you know all the men are pretty much weak and effeminate and i wanted to change that and i wanted to make sure guys were successful in their relationships so i made the conscious decision to wake up and say this is what i'm going to dedicate my life to and i've been living out this every single day um for the last few years and this is what i do 
right? This is my purpose. This is my mission in life. This is my, my burning purpose. And this is what I'm passionate about doing. So I created my purpose and I'm living it every day. You have to do the same thing. Once you decide to, you know, once you make the decision to dedicate your life to a cause, the stuff will start to make sense. Things will start clicking for you. Um, and you'll start to begin, you know, you'll start to began to gain a lot more confidence and this confidence is transferable to dating your, you know, um, relationships, friendships, and, you know, every arena of your life because you get validation from serving and you get validation from helping the world become a better place. You get a validation from helping people. You get validation for putting, bringing value to the marketplace and bringing value to the world. You get, re you get real, like, intense validation it's, it's like that type of validation it can't be matched like if, if to me it feels better than uh female validation i always say uh purpose validation feels better than pussy validation and when you know um when you you know you own your purpose you know you live in your purpose and you on your journey and on your mission you know, you know, and you will understand how valuable you are, right? It's a part of understanding your value. So create your purpose, you know, make this the conscious decision to dedicate your life to a cause and get on that shit and live it, breathe it every single day. And you'll understand how valuable you are to not only the world, but to women and relationships and to everybody you come in contact with. Next, increase your revenue, right? So let me give you some things that you can do to increase your revenue, but I don't want to make this a whole course about getting some money. We can chop it up about that another time, but fellas, you have to increase your revenue. How do you do that? Number one, your purpose. When you, when you provide value to the world, when you provide value to the marketplace, you're going to, the world is going to reward you. You're going to be rewarded by, uh, you know, by money and resources. So your purpose is one, uh, way you can increase your revenue. Uh, number two, get a marketable skill that adds value to the marketplace. HVAC, police officer, firefighter, personal trainer, um, you know, things like this, a plumber, things like this. It, you, you, people need these skills, right? And these are skills that, you know, add value, uh, programming, coding, cybersecurity. There's a ton of shit that you can do, but get you a marketable skill that adds value to the marketplace. That's going to pay you a decent wage. You understand? Pay you a decent livable wage. And some of these things pay a lot of money. So that's number two, get a marketable skill that adds value to the marketplace so you can make some decent money. Another thing you can do is leverage your skills and talents to sell courses online. That's part of what I do. A good source of my income comes from selling courses online. I'm skilled in the dating arena. I'm skilled when it comes to women. So I leverage my, I leverage my skills, right? I leverage my skills and I leverage my know-how and my knowledge about the dating game and the women. And I sell courses online and I make decent money doing that. You know, that's one of my many uh, streams of revenue. Next, you can get a side hustle in your spare time. Um, example, ride sharing, you know, driving Uber. You know, if you have a decent, uh, decent car, driving Uber, Lyft in your spare time, uh, doing food delivery, Uber Eats, Postmates. Uh, what's the other one? DoorDash, online uh, e-commerce, buying loaf on Alibaba and AliExpress, reselling on eBay, um, eBay and Amazon and, you know, shit like that. Um guys there's no you can do all type of shit there's no excuses to be broke anymore in 20 uh 2021 there's no excuses the internet is the great equalizer all you have to do is get up off your ass put your mind to it and get you some money there's several several things you can do like i, I just gave you three easy things you can do right now you do ride sharing you can do food delivery you can do online uh e-commerce and you know if all else fit all else fails amazon is always hiring but you have to get your fucking money up you have to be you can't be broke in 20, uh, 2021 there's no excuse for it next when it comes to increasing your value increase your sex skills get your sex game up fellas right and some ways you can do that is improve your stamina you know how last you long um you know get in the gym get in shape eat better and shit like that i got a course on um uh, 
how to make a woman fall in love with you, I go more in depth on, you know, improving your sex skill and stamina. But like I said, I'm gonna give you some tips here. So improve your stamina, master the art of foreplay, but keep the, keep the pussy eating to a minimum fellas. But there's other ways to do foreplay without eating pussy. Um, you know, also make sure you dominate her, make her perform submissive, uh, submissive sex acts on, on, on you. Right. What I make them do, this is a trick I do, right? Subtle trick, but it's, it's powerful. Right. I make them get on their knees and look up while they give me hair. Right. And I tell them in a dominant tone, like, hey, get on your knees. Right. And sometimes I even call them a, a bitch while I do it. Be like, hey, bitch, get on your knees or get on your knees, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like just dominating her. Also, you know, treat her like an object sometimes, you know, sometimes treat her like a, like she an object, like she a fucking piece of meat. Women like to be treated like that sometimes. Um, and also learn how to have passionate, sensual sex. Women really appreciate that too. Learning how to be sensual and how to be passionate. They don't want to be, you know, jackhammered all the time. They don't want to be thrown around the room all the time. Sometimes they want to be, you know, passionate and sensual. You understand? Like the, the real intimate shit, right? And you have to know when she want to be fucked like a slut. And you got to know when she want to, you know, she wants that passionate love making. You got to be skilled enough to know the difference and to read her tones and to read her vibe and shit. So you can know how to, you know, put that shit down the way that, that, that she need to be put that she needed to be put down on her in that moment. Like I say, sometimes they want to be loved on sensually. Sometimes they want you to bend them over and fuck them and smack them on the ass and call them a bitch and all type of shit. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, and one more thing, if you can, if, you, if you're long enough, make sure you're hitting that bottom. You feel me? Now, the next key in uh, finding and increasing your value is to improve your health if you can. Fellas, health is wealth. Listen, if you're fat right now, if you're overweight, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. Being overweight is very unhealthy and it has severe consequences over the long run you have to be in shape get in shape also hit the gym get your muscles on you don't have to be a uh, cali muscle or nothing like that but get you a, a nice frame get you a nice frame a nice a nice athletic frame women are attracted women are wildly attracted to shit like that you understand what i'm saying and this will appear you know this will appeal to her you know her her lust side her slut side and they'll look at you like you're more valuable when you in you know when you're in shape in that way because you you know you're eye candy to them but even outside of women you want to feel good about yourself you want to when you look in the mirror you want to feel good and you know you want to look like a million bucks you understand what i'm saying you don't want to look in the mirror and say, damn, I look like shit. Because when you look like shit, you feel like shit. And when you feel like shit, how can you provide the world any value or provide anybody any value when you feeling bad about yourself? You understand? So hit that gym. Also, fellas, be disciplined about what you put into your body. Be disciplined on, on the things that you eat. You know, food is very important. And if you feed in your, you know, you feed in your body bullshit, it's going to manifest in your mental health and it's going to ma manifest in your physical appearance. So, you know, be careful what you put into your body. Also, this is a key, fellas. Mental health is health, too. When I say health is wealth and when people say health is wealth and when I say improve your health, I'm not just talking about physical health. I'm talking about mental and emotional health as well. This is very important. Fellas, take care of your mental health. I need you guys to find an outlet, um, you know, for your emotions and your feelings and your anxieties and your depression. Find an outlet for it. Working out, seek therapies, counsel, counsel, mentors, friends. You talk to your mother, but, you know, journaling, vlogging, do what you have to do, but find an outlet, seek therapy. Put the fucking drugs down, put the al alcohol down, put the cigarettes down and de deal with your problems and improve your mental health. You know, it's very important. You have to have good, you know, you have to be stable up there if you want to provide value to people. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, like I say, mental health is important. Find an outlet. It's very important. Therapy. If you don't, you don't have anybody to lean on or you don't like journaling. Go to therapy. You understand what I'm saying? But take care of yourself. Now, the next key in um, increasing and finding your value, fellas, you have to master your emotions. Now, let's let's break this down, right? 
Mastering your emotions doesn't mean not feeling or suppressing them. That's a big misconception. Many guys think that, you know, you have to suppress your emotions or, you know, hide your emotions or, you know, hide your feelings and suppress them, right? Understand this. You are human. Mastering your emotions is not, you know, letting your emotions dictate your words and actions. You are human. You're going to feel things. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel love. You're going to feel sadness. You're going to feel uh, impulse. But the key to mastering your emotions is not letting your emotions dictate your actions. I'm going to say that again. Not the key to mastering your emotions is not letting your emotions dictate your actions or your words, right? Suppressing your emotions will tax your mental health. And it will make you toxic and you need to be mentally stable, right? When you suppress your emotions and bottle it up, bottle it up, it taxes you up, you know, it taxes your mental health. And, you know, the longer you hold stuff in, the more toxic you become. So don't suppress your emotions. You just have to learn how to not let your emotions dictate your words and your actions. But you are a human being. You are going to feel emotions. You understand? Just learn how to process those emotions and not let your emotions control you. That's mastering your, emotion, uh, your emotions. Also, here's a tip, right? Stay away from people who get you in your feelings. Stay away from people who, you know, don't respect your boundaries and they test your patience and they push your buttons. Stay away from people like that. You got to take care of yourself. And part of taking care of yourself and taking care of your mental health and mastering your emotions is keeping people away from you who, you know, who get to you, who fuck with you, who, who, who don't respect you, who push your buttons and to do things to get a rise out of you and shit like that, you know, and that includes women friends, family, everybody. So if a person is got not good for your emotions, if a person is not good for your mental health, keep them the fuck away from you. Now, the last key in finding and increasing your value is to find and master a craft, right? Get good at something. Get good at a skill. Get good at a talent. Find something and master it, right? I believe that every man should be a master at something. And you could quote me on that. You know, I think that's a quote from King Dre, right? Every man should be a master at something, right? And here's why. Being good at something will give you extreme confidence that you can transfer to other aspects of your life. You know what I'm saying? This, this confidence that, that you gain from playing basketball or playing a musical instrument or, you know, teaching guys the dating game like myself, right? This this tran this is tra you can this is transferable confidence that you can use and transfer to other aspects of your life, right? And you can also leverage your skills in that arena to make yourself a lot of money by teaching people how to do it, by entertaining people um on what you're doing, you know. Um there's guys on YouTube who do the, you know, in my opinion, some of the silliest shit ever, but they make a killing doing it. There's always somebody who's willing to pay you to entertain them with what you're doing. I pay you to teach them how to do what you're doing. I don't care what it is. You know what I'm saying? So get good at something so you can use that skill or talent, um, you know, in that arena and make yourself a lot of money. You can also give back by teaching people your craft like I was just talking about. Right. And this makes you. You know, this is, will make you valuable when you're teaching people your craft, you're teaching them your skill. You know, it'll make you feel valuable and you will feel a lot better and feel more confident. One more thing. Focus on one thing to master. Right. Folk take one thing and focus on it. Remember, a jack of all trades is a master at none. Guys like to, you know, do a million things at one time. No, concentrate your efforts and focus on mastering. One thing, don't be a jack of all trades. You know, you would rather be good at, you know, you would rather be a master at one thing than, you know, um, average at five things. You understand what I'm saying? You'll get, you'll get a lot further in life. You'll be more attractive to people. You'll be more respected by people when you master, when you can master one thing rather than being average at five different things. You understand what I'm saying? So find and master a craft. Every man should be a master at something. Go get the book. I'm going to recommend a book, Robert Green Mastery. So that's Mastery by Robert Green. Very, very good read. All right, fellas, that's pretty much the end of that. So now that we know what women find valuable in men, you know, we understand value and we understand the value of men, right? And now we understand how to find and increase your value. Fellas, it's time to take action. 
Don't just, you know, spend your money and listen to these classes because it's cool. It's cool to fellowship with us and, you know, have these sessions and chop it up, you know, on the live streams and, you know, in these, I'm going to be doing more sessions like this uh, more frequently. That's fine, but you have to take what you're learning and now it's time to applying it. it. Otherwise, what's the point? You understand? I'm not really here. You know, if you're entertained by me, that's cool, but I don't do this to be entertained and I actually do this, so... I want you guys to grow and I want you guys to become better, valuable men. So I'm going to leave you guys some homework. And when you get done with this assignment, um, I want you to DM me on Instagram and tell me you're done. Right. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of your qualities and skills that you can make a woman's life better. Right. And improve the quality of a relationship. So take a piece of paper. Um, you know, make a list of the qualities and skills that you have that you can make a woman's life better and improve the quality of a relationship. I want you to do that. And then I want you to make another list um, of your qualities and skills that you have that can make the world a better place or that you can bring to the marketplace and advance the world, make the world a better place, um, you know, make the world happier, friendlier, you know, more skillful in something. But just the qualities and skills that you have that can make the world or your community a better place. Once you get done with that, I want you to send me a DM and say done, right? Now, every day, I want you to strive to make this list longer and longer and longer. And when you do this every single day, focus on improving every single day, you'll become a valuable man that not only the world needs and attracted to, but women need and attracted to and you know willing to submit to you understand what i'm saying so do this assignment fellas make sure you do this assignment as soon as you get off this call take some time to do it if it take a couple days that's fine even if the list ain't long or even if it ain't shit on the list right now you gotta start somewhere so make this list and when you get done with it you know you when you get done with your first rendition of it like i said if it's only one thing that's fine when you if it's 10 things that's fine but the kids we're going to improve every single day and we're going to try to make this list longer and longer and longer and watch how your life improve watch how the value you have improve and watch how people start treating you with respect and they start treating you like you're a valuable person and also understanding and knowing this list gives you confidence for when you deal with women you understand but we already talked about that earlier but anyway fellas do this assignment and get back with me send me a dm in my instagram that ends this program i appreciate you guys for tuning in this is your gracious game advisor yours truly king dre i'm gone